down Dodge City and in the territory on west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with the U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, the story of a man who moved with it, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Inside a Dodge anyway, Chester. There's Ellen Henry's homestead. Wonder how she'd take to serving up a breakfast, Mr. Dillon. I'm plum hungry. I'll settle for water and the horses. I don't imagine Ellen has any extra food. No, sir. It's gone pretty hard for her since Ethan died, hasn't it? That's the talk. Look at her place. Three lean-tos and not a green thing growing. I don't know how she makes out. Well, maybe Luther helps more than the folks give him credit for. For a son, he's not much good to my way of thinking. I don't know when he turns a hand for his mother between stops at the Texas Trail and the Long Branch. At least not much like his father was. Or Ellen either, for that matter. That's a mite early. Nobody's stirring. Oh, oh, oh. We better just water our horses and ride on, Chester. Yes, sir. Quiet-like, isn't it? Hey, where'd you come from, Mr. Dillon? Uh, from the house, I think. Luther? I don't know. You're trespassing. Get off my land. It's Marshal Dillon, Ellen. We just stopped to water our horses. I recognize you. The trespassing still goes, Marshal. You're awful quick to fire, Ellen. Ethan and me never took to folks arriving unannounced. I still don't take to it. Well, that's no cause to be firing on us that way, Miss Henry, especially since you recognized it. Quit whimpering. If I'd aim to hit you, I'd have hit you. All right, Ellen. Get off my land and stay off. Just don't you get in any trouble with that rifle, Ellen. I expect you'll hear about it if I do, Marshal. Now get. I don't always aim high. Come on, Chester. How old would you say she is, Mr. Dillon? Oh, she can't be over 40, I guess. If that. She looks like an old woman. 60 or more. She's dried up. Dead inside. Remember when Ethan and her and the boy came out here, Mr. Dillon, right after the war? She's an awful pretty little thing. Mm-hmm. Luther was a little more than a baby then. No, well, Mr. Dillon, I was just thinking. Ethan was so proud of his homestead and his boy and Ellen. Now he's five years dead, the boy's gone bad, and his wife and his homestead, they've just dried up. It's kind of sad, ain't it? Yeah, it is. Well, come on, Chester, let's get on into Dodge. Huh? Oh, Mitch. Well, what'll it be? Uh, set up a bottle of rye, will you? Yes, sir, Marshal Dillon. <laughs> Look. There's Luther over there at the table. Alone. Yeah, I saw him. <coughs> well, thanks, Mitch. Wait here, Chester. Yes, sir. Uh, Mitch, could I have a little sugar in here? Mm. 
Mind if I don't get to my feet, Marshal? I got the feeling if I tried to stand up straight, I'd fall over first thing I knew. Sit still, Luther. I just don't have a lot of choice about it, Marshal. I was out by your place this morning, Luther. I hadn't seen your mother in a long time. Wish I could say the same. A woman shouldn't have to run a homestead alone. Not when her son's big enough to be a real help. Is this a lecture, Marshal? A do-good talk? Put your own name on it, Luther. I can't make you feel what you don't feel. But in a way, you're responsible for your mother and what she does. I'm real lucky, Marshal. I can quit listening any time I don't want to hear something. Between the old lady and people like you, I quit listening an awful lot. Get it straight, Luther. I don't care what happens to you. I done something wrong? You accusing me of something unlawful, Marshal? No. But if you have any feeling left for your mother or what happens to her, you'll do something about her. Living out there alone so much, she's gone a little crazy. <laughs> <laughs> she shot at you. <laughs> Is that all that's concerning you, Marshal? Half the time I do go home, she levels off at me. I got a ride in under fire. Or crawl in on my belly. She's crazy, like you said. That's why she's crazy. Then you ought to bring her into town. And get a keeper for her. Maybe I would. If I cared what happened to her, I don't care. I don't care at all. Well, that's up to you, Luther. Now, that's just another one of them things I didn't hear you say, Marshal. Uh, Luther's just plain drunk, isn't he, sir? That and just plain no good. Whatever you said drove him right out of here, Mr. Dillon. Mm-hmm. Well, we haven't been in the office since early yesterday, Chester. All right, sir. Only... Only what? Well, sir, Mitch has got a catalog in the back room, and he's not busy, and he says it's just full of things you can order straight from St. Louis. I thought I'd... Well... Uh, you got extra money, have you, Chester? Oh, no, sir. Well, that is not really extra money, Mr. Dillon. It's just that... Well, Mitch swears you can get underwear from this catalog that don't rub your skin raw, and I'd like to take a look at it. <laughs> All right, Chester, I'll wait. Yes, sir. Thank you. Oh, uh, Marshal. Uh, oh, hello, Cass. Now, uh, what's on your mind? Talk I heard, Marshal... It's uh, private, like maybe we go to your office. We can do our talking here. <laughs> I thought you was always of a mind to get me inside there, Marshal, where you could turn the key on me. Maybe I will someday, Cass. Now, come on, speak up. Yeah, I heard talk at Luther Henry Road cattle off Carnes' place last night. I saw you talking with him just now. I wondered if you'd heard the same. I haven't heard a thing, Cass. Odd, you wouldn't know. I was out of Dodge last night, all night. Uh, I wonder if it's so. L Luther didn't give himself away when you talked just now. You're the one who's heard the talk, Cass. I got my rights. I can ask questions of you, Marshal. If a man's heard ain't safe, he's got a right to know. Are you worried for Carnes or for you? If Carnes' cattle can be rode off, mine can. No. I didn't know you had much of a herd. What a man has is his own business, Marshal. I'm asking about Luther and the other rider. They say there was two. If Luther's wrong with the law, I'll get him. Is there anything else on your mind? Thanks, Mitch, for letting me see the book. Not a thing, Marshal. But I don't much like your attitude. I can't see that worry in me too much, Cass. All right, Chester, let's go. Yes, sir. Mr. Dillon, I was watching him from the back there. He's a sniveling sort, that cat. Mm-hmm. Come to think of it, though, I don't know a single bad thing he's done. 
Know any good he's done? No, sir. Can't say that he do, Mr. Dillon. Well, how about you, Joe? Find out about your fancy underwear. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> All right, now we can tend to business, huh? Come on. Hello, Marshal. I was waiting for you. Oh, good morning, Mr. Carnes. How do you, Chester? Well, how do, Mr. Carnes? You got the key, Chuck. Yes, sir. Well, I don't see you in town much, Mr. Carnes. Only when I got business, Marshal. Yeah. Well, come on in, won't you? My, it's close in here. <laughs> We've been away a day and a night, Mr. Carnes. Sure gets close that way. I'll just open up the back. Won't you have a chair, Mr. Carnes? I don't have a long piece to say, Marshal. It don't take long to say some of my cattle were stolen last night. Ah, uh, I heard. So soon? Yeah, Cass Stetter told me about it a few minutes ago. Hmm. Well, I don't know how Cass come by the information, but it's true. This is the second time it's happened in the last few weeks. You don't keep much cattle, do you? Hardly any. I suppose a hundred heads is the most I ever had at one time. Mm hmm But last night I lost five or six... About the same time before. Cass was of the mind that uh, Luther Henry did it. I don't know, Marshal. One of my hands said Luther was out of my place the other day just looking around. I got no real reason to suspect him. Only thing I know is that whoever it was rides a horse that shot all the way around. You don't see a lot of that on the prairie. No, you don't. You think there was just one rider, Mr. Carnes? There was two from the tracks, but the boys and me lost them in the rain. I thought I'd tell you about it, Marshal. I can't afford to lose a little I got. No, I'll do what I can, Mr. Kirk. I... I kind of hope it isn't Luther. Not for him so much as Ellen. She's had enough trouble. Yeah. Well, Chester and I'll ride out to the Henry place and look around, Mr. Carnes. If, uh... Luther's guilty, maybe some of Ellen's troubles will be over. Or maybe they'll just be beginning... Return for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, in the 17th annual poll of Noted Daily, CBS Radio won 12 first places. The top poll award, Champion of Champions, went to The Jack Benny Show. Best comedian was Eve Arden on Our Miss Brooks. Best comedian, Jack Benny. Best master of ceremonies, Bing Crosby. Bing also won the nod as best popular male vocalist. Doris Day was rated best feminine pop vocalist. And so it went in all 12 first places. Now for the second act of Gunsmoke. I swear, Mr. Dillon, I feel like I was riding right into the camp of the enemy, coming back to Ellen this way. <laughs> you think we should be flying a white flag as we ride up, Chester? You know, I'd feel a little safer to tell the honest truth. Oh, she's got no reason to fire on us. <laughs> but I'll agree, that's a pretty small comfort. Oh. Look yonder, Mr. Dillon. I think I saw her peering out. It's all right, Chester. Come on. <laughs> I don't see Luther's horse around. Maybe he isn't here. Well? Afternoon, Ellen. I uh, want to talk a bit about uh, Luther. I got work to do in the shed. I'm going there. You want to talk. All right. Let me help, Ellen. I'll get it. Uh, 
Uh, he's got a loose shoe. I aim to fix it. Well, we could be a hand, Ellen. If, yes, uh... I'm proud, too. I aim to fix it myself. All right. He wouldn't have shoes if I waited for a man to shoe him. Easy. Easy, Dal. Easy. Oh. You come to talk, Marshal. Yeah, about Luther. Come on. Open. Huh. Two nails clean out. No wonder it's loose. Carnes lost some cattle last night. Two riders got off with five or six head. One of Carnes' hands thinks Luther was one of them. Is he around, Ellen? I told you before. He comes and goes, Luther does. Well, have you seen him since we were here this morning? Don't recall that I have, Marshal. I got other things to occupy my thought. Like trying to get together enough money to go back to my people. What to do with those nails? Here they are, ma'am. Oh. I'd admire to help you, Miss Henry. I'll do it. That's a fine horse, Ellen. A real fine horse. Shot all the way around. Come on, boy. That was Ethan's way. This your horse or uh, Luther's? Mine. What? Well, that was Luther, Mr. Dillon, and he took your horse. Yeah. Do I make a run after him, sir? Not when he's wild, Chester. I don't want you shot or him either. I just want to talk to him. Well, he just comes and goes, huh, Ellen? Believe what you want, Marshal. I didn't know he was around. Like I said, I never know. I quit caring. Don't worry, Marshal. Luther will get his. He's had it coming to him for a long time. Well, I guess we ride back double, Chester. Yes, sir, we sure do. Luther sure cut out quick, Mr. Dillon. Maybe he did run those cattle off Carn's place last night. Maybe. He's running away from something. Wonder where he'll hide. Everybody around here knows your horse. Oh, he's made a lot of mistakes. He'll make more. Nothing says he's going to turn bright all of a sudden. You're not worried about your horse then, Mr. Dillon? I don't think so, Chester. What kind of a woman is that, Mr. Dillon? Ellen? Yes, sir. I don't know. I'm not much of a hand to understand women, Chester, any woman. I don't know. You think she knew Luther was home all along? Maybe. I just don't understand it, Mr. Dillon. It's not right somehow, a woman not caring about her own son. You hear her? She said right out, I quit caring. It just don't seem right. Still might close in here. I believe I'll leave them back windows up a spell, Mr. Dillon. I think I'll go up to Emil's blacksmith shop, Chester, and see if he has a horse to spare. All right, sir. Uh, there's some paperwork to catch up on if you get the time. Yes, sir. Of course, you'll want to write that place in Chicago about your underwear, the first thing. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. <laughs> I'll be back, Chester. But... Well, I may not need that horse after all. How's that, Mr. Dillon? Ellen Henry's riding up the street, leading my horse. Well, bless my soul, it sure is. There's something thrown across her saddle. Mr. Dillon, it looks like... Wait here, Chester. Hello, Ellen. 
I brought your horse back, Marshal. He's been run hard. He looks all right. You, uh... You found Luther, did you? He's dead. You found him dead? He had it coming a long time. Here, I'll lift him down. Chester! Easy. Easy, Darrell. Easy. Yes, Mr. Dillon? Uh, Chester... Take the body up to docks, will you? Yes, sir. Miss Henry, I... I'm real sorry. I'll be going now, Marshal. Well, I'll take my horse then, Ellen. You, uh... You got any plans for... burying Luther? Put him in any ground you like, only... Don't tell me where it is or when you do it. You know how he died, Ellen? He was shot. Look, it's near dark, Ellen. You could put up in town for the night if uh, you'd... Don't put him near Ethan, Marshal. I wouldn't want that. Cut on! Doc's working on Luther now, Mr. Dillon. He's just plumb full of holes. Yeah, I know. Poor Miss Henry. Even though she don't act like it, I just know she feels terrible. Yeah, she's grieving her heart on. Where are you going, Mr. Dillon? I don't think I express my sympathy to poor Miss Henry. Proper. Good no. I followed Ellen Henry West toward her homestead. The sun was down now, but I could see her ahead riding hard. There were clouds to the south and the smell of rain on the easy wind that blew in little circles around me. Ellen bore west, and I lost her past a clump of cottonwoods near Carnes' place, so I rode harder. And when I came even with the trees, there was just enough sun ray left to see her head south toward the dark clouds. She wasn't going home. It was dark now. I couldn't see anything. The storm clouds stretched black from the south and fastened over half the sky. And I rode hard against them till I saw the flicker of lantern shine ahead. It was Cass Stetter's place. I left my horse out away from the house and walked in as softly as I could. Cass and Ellen were having their talk in a cattle shed near the You've house. You've trusted me before about the money, Ellen. What's the rush this time? My work's done, Cass. It was done last night when Luther and me drove them last few from Carnes' place over here. I want my share and Luther's. Him not cold dead yet, you want a share. Ain't a mother entitled to whatever her son leaves? Mother. You never had no mother feel for him, and him no love for you either. Ha! Huh. Ain't you the one to talk about love, though. It takes courage to love, to love with all of you. When the love goes, they take it and bury it in the ground. There's nothing left but hate. I wouldn't kill my own kin. You wouldn't be that honest. You won't even steal cattle yourself. Buy it off of them as has the courage to ride in and rustle it. Yeah, how'd it feel, killing your own Ellen? Like it'll feel killing you, Cass. If you don't give me the money here and now, like nothing at all. Luther's dead and gone because he tipped his hand, showed his face around Karn's place, talked big in the saloons. He was no use. No use at all. There's no woman in you at all. I've been dead five years. And your time's running short, too, Cass. I'm in a hurry. Too late to hurry, Ellen. What's he... Too late to move for gun, so. Well, I'm sure glad to see you, Marshal. 
Are you, Cass? Oh, I sure am. I guess I called a trick on Luther, all right, didn't I? Yeah, you were a big help. You and Luther stole the cattle, Ellen, and brought them to Cass for pay, is that it? Only sometimes, like now, we didn't get paid. Don't believe her, Marshal. You wouldn't take the word of one as murders your own son, would you? I don't have to, Cass. Carnes Bryan won't be hard to find on any cattle you got here. Cass was just slow to move him on, Marshal. If he'd have gone on toward Abilene with him last night like we planned... You're lying, Helen Henry, you're lying. Now get your horses. Both of you. Wait. Well, why are you taking me, Marshal? Well, there's some kind of a law, Cass, about buying and transporting stolen cattle. Yeah, Marshal knows his law, Cass. You, you know what she did to Luther, don't you, Marshal? Yeah, I know. Now, come on. You'd like it better, wouldn't you, Marshal? If one of us made a move so you could use your gun. I said, come on, Ellen. I think I'd like it better if you used your gun, Marshal. I ain't going to get back east now anyway. You'd be taking a coward's way out, Ellen, if you made me kill you. Ah. <coughs> I said, get your horse, Cass. <laughs> Now, make your choice, Ellen. But I don't think Ethan would think much of you. All right, Marshal. I'll go. But mind what I said. Don't put Luther near Ethan. They wasn't the same kind. Gunsmoke, transcribed under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Kathleen Height, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Jeanette Nolan, Sam Edwards, John Daner, Harry Bartell, and Herb Vigran. Parley Bear is Chester. Gunsmoke is heard by our troops overseas through the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. This coming Monday evening, hear Richard Widmark as one of the desperate Spencer brothers riding against time and death in a suspense drama well calculated to keep your interest high. Also Monday night, you'll want to hear CBS Radio's Lux Radio Theater starring Joan Fontaine and Joseph Cotton in the strange drama September Affair. Remember, both this Monday night on most of these same CBS Radio stations. Suspense and Lux Radio Theater. This is Roy Rowan speaking. America now listens to 105 million radio sets and listens most to the CBS radio network. <laughs>